Okay, YouTubers, we're going to go over today something that's pretty important. It's called uh, drive line geometry. And when I say drive line geometry, I'm pretty sure that everybody's face is kind of looking like this right now because I know it's not really exciting or anything. But it's important because it keeps your car lasting longer and less wear and tear on the drive line of the car. So you'll have less downtime and headaches and money spent. So it is important in that aspect. So let's get to it real quick. I don't want to bore you guys to death, so what we're going to be talking about real quick is basically the rear drive line of the car, which includes the axles, the hubs, and coming off the rear differential. I know it's hard to see what I'm talking about on the chassis, so I do a diagram on my board here. Let's get this lined up. That looks pretty good. All right, so basically in a zeroed out car, everything is in alignment. All your drive line is in perfect zeroed out scenario, which means that the points of articulation are all in alignment here and here. Um, in the extreme version, which is kind of what I drew here, I know it looks kind of crazy, but just to illustrate what I'm trying to talk about is um, if you do um, run a extreme, amount of, a extreme amount of camber and drop the ride height to the car a lot, what's happening is um, the points of articulation are increased, so you're asking the joints to do a whole lot more work, and more work means more wear on the joint itself, so um, you can see represented here a point here which would be from your diff going up to the actual hub and then up again to where the wheel would be mounted onto the hub itself right here so some people would say well that's a little extreme you know but people do run cars like this I've seen it on videos and stuff and it it's fine to do it for a while but you know if you start breaking stuff then well you can kind of say, well, maybe I shouldn't run so much uh, drop and so much camber on my car. And um, the reason why this is important is what you most quickly realize is on some of these cars that have the really high um, turning on the chassis itself is it has a 50 degree turning articulation on the joint. So what what you're doing is is if you add a lot of drop to that and a lot of camber to that you're asking that joint in there to do a whole lot of work because not only is it trying to drive the car but it's also trying to bend 50 degrees and it's also trying to bend 50 degrees while angling at let's say six degrees if you have a whole lot of camber on the car um, so that's going to put a lot of stress on that little joint and really quickly you may see that you'll start ending up with wheel chatter to where when you start turning the car you'll notice the joint will start binding and the front wheel will start chattering um, you'll have to back off your turning which will you know decrease your amount of turning rate of the car so that's about the nuts and bolts of it we're not going to go too in depth into it uh, everybody drives their car differently they set their car up differently the way they want it to feel I'm just basically speaking on the mechanical aspects of it so you know, you can set your car up how you want to. Um, real quick, I wanted to hit on ride height and chassis setup real quick. Like I said, I don't want y'all people to go to sleep on me. So. And what I'm talking about is on older chassis, like so, you may have a battery on one side and the car may be out of balance. Um, so you throw the battery in, um, you're driving around the car drifts good one way and not the other way you say well what's going on with my car what you may not realize is that the ride height of the car may be actually off so you could get a ride height gauge like one of these really cheap like five dollars or if you don't have a ride height gauge maybe you could find a ruler with some millimeters or something on it just something to measure from the bottom of the chassis plate to the ground and that will and then what you can do is put your battery in make your adjustments on your car get everything right on both sides and if you want a little bit more turn in on the car a little bit more grip on the front 
you can always add a little bit of drop to the front to uh, make it the weight shift towards the front using a uh, rake stance on the car and that will give you a little bit more turn in on the car um, versus a newer chassis which has basically everything off the center of the car so but still you can have a little bit of bias you know if you have uh, the weight not exactly right so the car could be a little bit to the left but to the right but you can adjust it out um, just by taking some time uh, get a nice flat surface set your ride height with the battery in the car and then you should be good to go so that is it and uh, hopefully I didn't make you look like this that's not the point of my videos I want you to be informed and drifting for a long long time and enjoying the hobby instead of sitting around scratching your head going why is my car always breaking because that's not good so get your car set up, take some time, and go out and enjoy yourself. Thanks for watching.